So today, Biden went to Valley Forge, of all places, to talk about why Trump is bad. He was supposed to be there tomorrow, but they moved it to today because they were worried he was going to slip and fall in the snow. I ironic enough that Valley Forge represented some of the worst weather of the Revolutionary War. But that didn't stop them from winning the, the war. Sure stopped Biden from going. Biden, on the other hand, it is also not lost on me that Jill Biden, though maybe the greatest wardrobe oversight ever, was in fact wearing a red coat to Valley Forge. I'm, and I'm guessing Biden chose Valley Forge as some symbolism to George Washington and his 1777 holdup there or something like that. But we have to address the irony here. Beyond the fact that the entire Revolutionary War was fought against the world's most powerful army by farmers and working class people making up a militia that Biden thinks is outdated with guns that Biden doesn't want you to have against a tyrannical force that wanted to tax them and increase regulations and treat colonists as if they were second class citizens. Raise your hand if you feel a lot like one of those colonists right now under Joe Biden's rule. I kind of do. If these colonists were alive today, Joe Biden would hate them, just like he hates the Tea Party, which is ironically named after the revolution. Now, Joe Biden, he's a modern day redcoat. Stack all that on top of the fact that Valley Forge was the refuge of a failed battle to retake Philadelphia, the same city where Biden gave this speech. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. They promote authoritarian leaders and they fan the flames of political violence. If you think that was bad, right out of the gate, this speech today, Biden gave a speech today, a plea to voters at the site of a failed campaign. The irony is not lost on me. The, the fundamental concern among the colonists there at Valley Forge were supply chain issues, largely failed by poor transportation management. Not unlike the entire country today under Biden's transpo secretary, Pete Buttigieg, in fact, the winter of death, ironically called. It, where have we heard that before? Nowhere, right? It's become so, it became so bad that in Valley Forge in 1777, there was a risk of mutiny. Kind of not unlike Biden has on his hands right now. Not only among his own staff, but with his biblically low approval ratings nationwide. The men and women at Valley Forge were saved by George Washington, who worked with Congress to revitalize supply routes that saved our militia. And maybe that's what Joe Biden was trying to signify, I guess, but he hasn't worked with Congress on anything yet. So I'm not sure what, what sense this makes, especially considering in his first campaign ad of 2024, he called over half the people in America a bunch of extremists. Not unlike the British Empire at the time of Valley Forge, who called the colonists similar things. How'd that turn out for the crown? Either way, some focus group tested PR firm chose Valley Forge, I think, in an effort to compare Joe Biden to George Washington, which is laughable on its face, because 40 percent of Joe Biden's own party wants to cancel George Washington. It, it, these memes just write themselves. I, does, does one hand even talk to the other in this administration? Joe Biden is not George Washington. Washington was an anti-establishment, freedom-loving unifier that when offered the title of king, he declined the position of power offering to the constitutional republic we have today. Raise your hand if you think for one second Joe Biden would decline the title of king if offered. <laughs> no, fat chance. If you believe that, I got a bridge that I can sell you on the cheap. Washington's entire presidency was based on building a country that worked for its citizens, not for its own government expansion. George Washington certainly would have never removed anybody from a ballot. And in Washington's farewell speech, he said, quote, in this sense, it is that your union ought to be considered as a main prop of your liberty and that the love of that one ought to be endeared to the preservation of the other. And what did Biden say today? We're living in an era where a determined minority is doing everything in its power to try to destroy our democracy for their own agenda. The American people know it. And they're standing bravely in the breach. But I'll keep my commitment to be president for all of America, whether you voted for me or not. I've done it for the last three years, and I'll continue to do it. 
all of America while crapping on half of it. Joe Biden, despite his calls for unity during his 2020 campaign, has been the greatest divider of this country. Race relations, all time low. He has driven us closer to the tyranny we fought against 250 years ago, not further. There is less prosperity than ever, less faith in government, less hope. So maybe that sight is fitting, considering 2024 will be the year of political revolution to shut down tyrants to save this country. Someone better tell his PR firm. This is an angry guy. I mean, Joe Biden's an angry man that can't run on his own record. So he made the entire speech today about January 6th and how bad a bunch of people were, calling it an insurrection. Let me put this to bed. The party he's accusing of an insurrection owns the majority of the guns in this country. And none but nobody brought a single one there that day. Tell me more about an insurrection. 